It's funny watching the reaction to certain stories sometimes because fans will be up in a, or one pocket of the fan base will be up in a frenzy and the other will be like, why is the media talking about this? And then that was exactly what was happening over the last 24 hours with the Jahan Dotson story. Because opinions are all over the place, and that is what happens with the reckless speculation of August in the NFL, when we are just talking about hypotheticals and we only have parts of the picture. How Dotson is doing uh, in one particular game was certainly worth talking about, and more specifically, how much he played in that particular game. It begs a lot of questions. What we don't have is a lot of answers. But there were certainly some folks that kind of got defensive of Dotson and thought this was a totally media-driven Oh my God, you know, he's, he's wide receiver too. How could you possibly? Well, the, the cool part about being in the media, if you're, say, Sam Fortier, who asked this question, is you get to go and ask the principals. You get to go to Dan Quinn and be like, hey, what's going on with wide receiver two? Jahan Dotson played a lot of snaps. What's, what's up there? And so this morning, before the joint practice against the Dolphins, Sam Fortier asked Dan Quinn, what's going on with wide receiver two currently? And here is Dan's answer. I would say we are right in the middle of it. And so um, you'll see a lot of guys in today. You'll see two, three, four, five. There's a lot of guys that are really battling. I've been uh, really impressed with Alameda. And uh, I thought he's had a really strong camp. Um, looking forward to getting um, Luke some extra work into here, Jahan, uh, Diami. So that's where we're at. And then the special teams is going to have a factor in that as well. Okay. Sure doesn't sound like John Dotson's got a lock on wide receiver, too. And, by the way, the other cool part about doing this job and, and it jobs like Sam's and Ben Standig's and, and on down the list, John Kime, is, is that we also get to go and watch. And I think this was pretty obvious that John Dotson is not locked in at wide receiver, too. I think what varies, what is not, uh, or what is more up for debate is not whether there's anything set beyond Terry McLaurin as wide receiver one. This is fairly obvious, should have been already, but is now very, very obvious after Dan Quinn's statement this morning that, that is, there's nothing decided. I think what is more going to be sussed out and what is more open to interpretation is, what is John Dotson right now for this team? Obviously, he's a former first-round pick, but he wasn't selected by Adam Peters, and thus, I don't know how much that actually means. My guess is basically nothing other than the logistical considerations of his contract, that he is cost a certain amount of money and to cut him would cost a certain amount of money or to move him or whatever. They're not, by the way, they're not cutting him just that there are contractual logistical parts that if you have more invested in a player, whether you as a front office gave that player that money or not, it does make moving on from them uh, or, or not utilizing them and giving them a chance to prove that they're worth what you're paying them. Uh, it does make that a little bit harder of, of a mental exercise. So that's thing one. Thing two, when I see Jahan playing as much as he did, to me it's two things. One, it is absolutely a, hey, let's see what if this guy can prove it to us. We're going to put him in a bunch of situations and see if, if he can do things that we're asking, whether it's running routes from a certain spot, running certain kinds of routes, working with different quarterbacks, what, whatever the challenge is, whatever they want to put on the test. It's clear they wanted to test Jahan Dodson. Uh, And not like, oh, we're going to test you. But like, they wanted to give him a test. But it's also, I think, for them, they want to know the answers to the test so they know what to do with him. Not so much of a, hey, we're trying to test you and see what you're made of kind of test. It's a, how do you do here? Okay. You only got a C there. Not you're a failure uh, or you're not good enough and and how how could we possibly keep you because you got a C it's we're not going to put you in that position because you get an A over here B over here a B minus over here those are all better than C oh god on that one you got a D we're not going to ask you to do that either and so as they try to learn Jahan from the inside it's one thing to play against him but to really study him know him understand how he ticks use him in this system with this scheme with this set of players around him where does he fit and there's only so much of that you can do in practice and so you all of a sudden you have 30 reps to give him in a game 30 snaps and let's go out and see how he does can he block on the outside can he block from the slot can he come back and crack as a blocker uh like can we trust him to hit a linebacker or hit a safety say probably not um can he separate against certain 
guys and, and win on certain routes in the timing that he needs to. Because Jahan is a guy last year that at times would win if you watch the tape, but then if you pause the tape when he wins, you look back and and it the quarterback's already moved on because he takes too long. Um, he doesn't play with the urgency that you need to at the NFL level. That was a huge problem for Jahan last year. Also, there are times where he gets uh, roughed up a little bit in routes. The, the physicality is not there. And so I, I think that this is as much experimenting to try to figure out what the best role is for Jahan as much as, oh, he doesn't he doesn't have a role here at all. So that's that's one thing I would say. I will add, though, the last part of Quinn's answer there when he says special teams are important really is interesting because Jahan Dotson doesn't really have a role on special teams. Like, yes, they're having him return punts in practice, catch punts in practice, but he's not going to cover kicks. And so if he's going to be wide receiver three or four, which, again, I don't think I don't think four is on the table. Like, I don't think, realistically think he's going to be the fourth, the guy with the fourth most snaps this year at wide receiver, assuming everyone's healthy, right? If, the de- if, if we're putting together a depth chart, I think it's Terry. I think it's probably going to be either Jahan or Alameda Zacchaeus. I think Diami and Luke McCaffrey are somewhere. Like, I don't, I don't think Jahan's falling too far down that pecking order. But if they're trying to figure out how to construct a roster, like, you can't have a fourth or fifth wide receiver that doesn't play special teams. That just doesn't work. And so I'll go back to something that I've said a number of times over the past couple of days, which is if a team wants to trade for Jahan Dotson, I do think they would listen because I don't think that he necessarily fits what they are trying to build, which I will now stop for a moment and state something that should be obvious, but is hysterically not based off of every internet conversation that I see. No, they can't trade him for Brandon Ayuk. Matt, pop quiz. Don't worry. This is not a this is not a hard one. Who is outside of John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan most responsible for building the roster in San Francisco? The current roster? Yeah. Well, I I mean I would say Adam Peters would is a very yeah. big portion. Yeah, Adam Peters. So wouldn't it make sense that if Jahan Dotson doesn't fit what Adam Peters' current team and current roster is 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 doing, that he's not gonna fit the one that's already built in that same image? Yeah, no. Like, like if he's not physical and big and, and tough enough uh, to be here, and that's the problem, you're not going to trade him to the place that the GM, who is employing the same strategy, just came from. Like, this isn't Madden where you turn fair trades off. Like, the other team gets to say no. And if Jahan Dotson doesn't fit the player profile of a Washington commander in 2024, he sure as you know what doesn't fit a San Francisco 49er. What is wrong with you people? Think for four seconds. Yeah, there's not a whole lot that should lead you to believe that a player who the current commander's organization is kind of saying, you know what, he's not good enough right now would meet the standards of what is arguably the most... The model the tightest, that they're building on? The model system, yes. the tightest system, the do-your-job system. No. No, absolutely. They're not interested in... Like, yes, I get it on a baseline level because the Niners apparently want a wide receiver, but they're going to want someone who fits what they do. And Jahan Dotson is potentially on the trade block because he doesn't fit what they do because what they do is what this team wants to do. Okay, that's enough of the uh, San Francisco uh, sidebar. Sidebar. They're more fun if they're from Boston. All right, uh, what does Quinn expect from Dotson, both in the game and in general? Wrapping up with the head coach this morning. Do you expect John to play a similar volume of snaps as did last week? Uh, Probably. Yep, I would say I don't know if it'll be the exact same, but it'll be in the similar space, um, same uh, high volumes on the other guys that I listed as well. Yeah, I think with all the guys that we were talking about at that spot, um, the urgency, um, the run game, the pass game, so like, you know, the quickness in and out of breaks. So not everybody plays the same spot, Nikki, but I do want to see with he and with all the other guys really finding some really competitive moments, you know, that plays after the catch, the blocks, you know, at the point of attack. Um, sometimes even in man-to-man during this phase of evaluation that he beat the person even though the ball didn't go to that spot so um, I'm really trying to evaluate them 
with and without the ball. It's all the stuff that we have we have been talking about for basically a year with Jahan. He had a really good camp last year, and that's something I will keep in mind. I'll close with this. Jahan had a pretty good camp last year to an excellent camp last year. It really started on fire and tapered off a little bit towards the end, but was really sensational for the entire spring and, and into the summer. And then he was brutally bad during the season. Maybe it's opposite this year. Maybe he just needs to get in the games in this system, and once they start game planning some stuff up, he'll take off. But the problem is the thing that's going to get him on the field, playing with urgency, playing with physicality, is not his game. And it can either become his game in the way that, like, much different talent, much different draft investment, much different all that. But Cole Turner, was. it feels like he was told, hey, dude, if you don't play like your hair's on fire every snap, you don't have a future here. And I don't know if Cole Turner is actually good enough to make this team. And I don't know if the numbers are going to play out for him because he's got three tight ends that are distinctly in front of him. But that dude has played his ass off every single snap of every single play. And if Jahan Dotson was doing that, I don't think we're having this conversation. Not to say that he's slacking, not to say that he doesn't have a good work ethic, but it's learning how to do that at what is now the standard for the commanders. And that's different. It takes guys time. And I'm hoping that Jahan catch, catches on. He's a great kid. I think he's really smart. I think he's thoughtful. Um, I think he's really talented. But that stuff isn't enough. There has to be that that burning desire that just jumps off the screen, jumps off the tape, jumps out in the eyes of the coaches if you're going to play for Dan Quinn and ultimately the guy who's deciding the 53 in Adam Peters. Now, again, I don't think that they're going to cut him because contractually it doesn't make sense. Talent-wise, it doesn't make sense. But how many minutes he plays, how many snaps he gets, how many targets, all that kind of stuff. That is very much in flux, and I think right now, if the season started tomorrow, he would be behind, at the very least, Salamide Zacchaeus on the depth chart. Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.